Good morning and welcome to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting room. Today we are going to make our um, hot pads. I am really excited to show you guys how to do this because um, they turned out amazing. I absolutely love them. And I did go to the quilt show yesterday, so that's why we are doing this video this morning. So we will be quilting in our pajamas this morning. <laughs> Got my cup of coffee. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have all the pieces cut out. I'm going to show you some samples that I've already made. And then we're going to put this thing together. So this was the first one. I showed this on Sewing Talk Tuesday. This is my donut uh, hot pad. And you just slide your hand in here. And voila, you can grab your pans, do whatever you need to do with that. Put it on the whole, the handles of your pots and pans so that you don't burn your hands like I do every time. Um, the next one, the next two that I'm going to show you, I actually, um, I showcased this on Sewing Talk Tuesday as well, a little bit back. Um, this was a kit that I purchased from my local quilt store. Um, but I want to show you the differences here. So this one is fully quilted. So this is an option that you can fully quilt this. So this is fully quilted and top stitched all the way around. This one is a lot thinner than the ones I'm gonna show you next. The next one that I did, this was part of that kit um, that I purchased and I have something on the back of it. And so this one, I didn't do anything like that. I didn't quilt it. I did not um, top stitch around it or anything. I just sewed it together. And again, it works just fine, but it's a little more fluffy. I find that this one that has the quilting has a little bit easier of a grip inside. Just FYI, depends on what you're going for. And then this one, I didn't quilt it, but I did top stitch around the edge. So there you have it. And again, I think the quilted one um, is just a little more manageable, but these are certainly fine they work great and they're going to go in my drawer upstairs in the kitchen so i'm going to show you all the materials that you will need so we will be working with these strips this is a great scrap buster you'll want to use something like this i have two pieces of these little strips they are one and a half inches wide by eight inches long then I have my little circles. Now it depends on what you're going to use to cut your circles out. So I showed you that I used a little button tin that I've had that belonged to my grandmother. And thank you for all of the really awesome suggestions that you've given um, on what I should do with that slipper pattern. Cause I just might do that. I might actually um, frame it. It's just such an awesome thing to find. So anyway, um, what you will need is, you're gonna need four circles regardless, okay? So I am going to use these two. I cut contrasting fabrics this time so that you could see what I'm doing. So this is gonna be my main fabric for the inside of the hot pad. These circles are eight inches. And then this is gonna be my outer one. And then I have a piece of Inselbrite and this is what it looks like on the back side. So I've already cut these out and then I have two pieces of batting. So I have three pieces. We're gonna have to sandwich these because with Inselbrite you wanna sandwich. So how I will do this, it's gonna be very tricky, um, is I will put my layer like this with my Inselbrite on top, my batting on the bottom and then I will have my pieces here, one of my red pieces on top and one of my red pieces on the bottom. And then this will serve as my top piece for this and then lay it down and it'll work out perfectly. So you'll need three, two pieces of regular batting, one piece of Insel Bright. If you're not gonna work with Insel Bright, then you don't need to worry about it. You'll only need three pieces of batting. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to protect your hands. So that's why I am saying that. Um, if you wanna use less, you are more than welcome to do that. This is how I do mine. 
And so I'm just sharing that with you. So you will need four eight inch circles of fabric. You will need three eight inch circles of batting and insole bright. Two for batting, one for insole bright. Two one and a half inch by eight inch strips. And we're gonna get started now. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my main pieces here these two and I am going to take my piece of insole bright one piece of batting I am going to layer them on top of one another like so I will do that here as well on the back side of this Now, I can quilt this if I want to. And so that is what I'm going to do because I do want to. So I'm just gonna do some straight lines. You can do whatever you would like. And I am just using my quarter inch foot right now. Once I get all these layers together, I will switch over and do a, um, I will use my walking foot. Okay, so I have my bottom piece quilted up. Like I said, it's not perfect. It doesn't matter. It's going to go in the oven. <laughs> so I'm not worried about that. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to need to sandwich our, um, our top pieces. So we're going to take our two main fabrics that we have. You should have one for the top, one for the bottom. Whichever you're going to work with, um, you'll want to do that. All right, and then we're gonna sandwich these and we're gonna go back to the cutting mat real quick. All right, and at this point, you're gonna need a rotary cutter and a ruler. You're just gonna bring it over and you're going to line these up. Now, when I cut mine, I cut them a little wonky, but that's okay. Um, I recommend cutting with scissors because if you don't, you'll get some shredding going on like I did here when I tried to do this with a rotary cutter. So I just, scissors are your friend for this project. So one, two, three, four, since this is an eight inch circle, I'm gonna count over four and I'm gonna cut on my center circle line right here. Four inches over, cut it down the center and voila. So now you can either clip or you can pin. So I'm gonna use some little clips just to hold this together. We're gonna to quilt this portion as well, so it won't matter. So you're definitely gonna just wanna hold this together so that when you go over to your machine, it doesn't all fall apart. All right, so now we need to quilt these pieces and we're just gonna quilt them the same way we did our larger piece. So now I'm going to pull that clip off and I'm just going to sew some lines. And I'm going to do that to both of my pieces. All right, I have both my pieces quilted, as you can see. And now I'm going to put my strips on. So now you're going to take your one and a half by eight inch strip and you are going to place that right sides facing each other. You need to determine which side you wanna put that on. I'm gonna do it here, and then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam here, just to attach it, just like we would binding. So you should have something that looks very much like this. Then you're going to take it and you're going to finger press it open like so. Take it to the iron and press it. And then what I do is I fold this in like this right here. Just gonna fold that in, not all the way over, but just enough in that crease. And then I will press that. And then I fold it over and it fits perfectly onto my um, my mitt. So I'm going to go All press. Right. So I have pressed this like so. 
You can see it's nice and pretty and even. So now I'm just gonna sew and stitch this down to seal it up. And I'm just gonna use the edge of my foot here to just kind of go along this little edge. and you should have something that looks like that. All right, so I've got them both sewn together. Now I'm gonna trim off the edges up here. I'm just gonna even this up, and you can do this with scissors. You don't need to get fancy and rotary cut or anything like that. You're just gonna cut off these excess tails because they were a little longer than what we needed, but it's better to have them just a tad bit longer than not long at all because worse if you're short so now we are ready to start assembling our hot pad take a pair of pinking shears and cut around my circle or you can take a pair or I'm sorry you could do a zigzag stitch around this or you could do surge you could surge it for right now I'm just going to use some pinking shears this is going to help it lay nice and flat it's also going to make it look a little bit nicer. And uh, yes, so this is how I make mine. And you'll see why here in just a second. It's just a little bit of an extra step, but it's well worth it. So definitely want to do this. Or like I said, zigzag stitch, whatever. Zigzagging is a little bit quicker. Um, so now it's you can see that the edges are nice and pretty. All right, so now what we do is we take our two pieces that we have and our strips are gonna face the inside. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have right sides facing each other. So you're gonna put your right side face down, just like you would if you were going to sew something. Now is the time that we wanna switch over to our walking foot. And I also use clips for this portion of it because I wanna make sure that it stays in place. And actually, I might actually just do a quick Pinking, I might just pink these as well. It just helps everything to lay nice and flat. So let's just do this. Come on, there we go. All right, now I have both both pieces pinked. Okay. So like I said, right sides facing each other. So I'm so challenged right now, <laughs> like this. And then I will clip it down just so I have everything nice and in place. Like I said, we're gonna use a walking foot for this because we are going through many, many layers of thick fabric. And we want to make sure that we catch everything and that our needles don't get stuck and break. All right, I've installed my walking foot. Everything is put together nice and even, and I am going to just stitch around the whole, um, the whole hot pack. When I get to this opening here, I'm going to back stitch just because I want to make sure it's nice and secure. And I just continue sewing in a circle. Now, if you're not comfortable with sewing in a circle, take itty bitty steps and just kind of turn it, 
turn the fabric as you need to and just sew straight like you normally would. Again, we're gonna back stitch right here. Back where we started, and then back stitch here. We're going to cut our threads, and then we're going to flip it open. So we're going to flip this to the other side, like this. Ouch! Don't do what I just did. <laughs> And I have a lot of loose quilting threads here from when we quilted the back here, but that's okay. Now we're gonna flip the other side. I'm gonna use my, my poker just to kind of even out those seams a little bit. Just run it along there. You could use a chopstick, a spoon, you could do anything really. Would really help to just kind of help it lay a little bit flatter. And uh, I'm just using the rounded part, in case you're wondering. Just gonna try to poke some of this out with my fingers a little bit more. Okay, and now we have something that looks very much like this. And I am going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to actually press this. I'm gonna give it a nice press down because I want it to sit nice and flat. So that is what I will do. You just gotta work with it to make it kind of go the way you want it to. All right, so I'm gonna go press that. All right, so we're pressed. So the next step is to top stitch. This is optional, you do not have to do it, but I am going to do it because I like the way it looks. And I'm going to grab some of my extra thread and I'm gonna pull my thread, my bobbin thread up to the top, kind of like when we do quilting. That way it will look nice and neat on the bottom when, I, um, when I'm finished. I won't have any nesting going on, but this thing is a booger to get, so there we go. All right, so I'm just going to top stitch all the way around. And voila, you're done. So that's so what it looks like when you top stitch on the back. Put your hand in there and you're good to go. You can grab that pan, you can grab that bowl. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like on the back, on the front. It turned out so cute. All right, that's how you make a hot pad. All right, so we're finally done. I'm so excited to show these to you. So these are the hot pads that we made. Aren't those awesome? They turned out so stinking cute. I did a little bit of a different quilting style on the back of this one here. Um, so I'm ready to go bake some cookies or some pie, apple pie. My husband would probably like that a lot because apple pie is his favorite. And I have a great recipe that used to be his mother's. So I should probably make that for him today, especially since he was such a great trooper and went to the actual quilt festival with me yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of owe him big time. Um, and I can't wait to show you all what I did get while I was there. I did get some really cool stuff. 
Anyway, if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and give it a like. That helps the YouTube algorithm see the video. Um, if you would like to share, that's great because sharing is caring and I always do appreciate that. All of my affiliate links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to click that little bell. You get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video and keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.